I give it time. My name is Linda Gray, and I'm chair of the Norwich Energy Committee. And we instigated having this workshop here, but I want to give full credit to the other area um, energy committees that, that helped with that. So Hartford Energy Commission, the Heartland Energy Committee, Norwich, Beckford Energy Committee, Sharon Energy Committee, Sable Woodstock, and also the Upper Valley Sierra Club. So thank you guys for coming. Thanks to the others for helping spread the word on it. And I'm going to just get get started. Jane Pappas, who's with NeighborWorks, is going to introduce us and get us going. Thank you. Okay, so the purpose of this presentation is really just to talk about what are the first steps that a homeowner or business owner should take um, when kind of approaching energy efficiency from a comprehensive perspective. Um, and thank you all of our partners for being here. Um, we are the one-stop shop. Um, we are the first place that you would want to um, start with to get started on um, a comprehensive approach. So who are we at Heat Squad? Um, we're part of the nonprofit housing organization Neighbor Works of Western Vermont, which is a, which is a, has been around for about 30 years. Um, and we provide all the answers and support for home buyers and owners. Um, keep your interests in mind as a nonprofit. Um, we have several departments: realty lending, financial counseling, and education, home repair, as well as the efficiency um, arm, which is us Heat Squad. <clears throat> and we're part of a, a, a national network, which is Neighbor Works of America. And the entire point is sustainable, affordable home ownership for as many people as possible. Um, so we provide support um, to improve the efficiency of <coughs> homes and businesses for several years now, since 2010. Our audits are reduced cost, starting at $150 for most people. Um, we provide your audit report the same day. We're objective in, in our advice. We're not trying to sell any one particular job. We're really looking for your interests. Um, and we have in-house financing for this efficiency work. We're available in five counties as of now, and soon to be expanding. So that's um, Rutland County, Wigan and Windsor, Addison, and Bennington as of now, and a little bit in our main areas. <coughs> And our partners are Visions of the Month, Green Mountain Power, um, local contractors, energy committees, and energy champions around the state. Um, so why should we go about with energy? Why should we go about um, starting with energy efficiency work? Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about some myths that are commonly heard around the area. Um, how you're losing energy in your home. Um, and what should we do to address those concerns um, to save money, to improve the comfort of your home and the, the air quality, and to have a healthier home and business. So let's start with a couple of myths and misinformation that we hear commonly at Heat Squad. And we, we go through these and we call them our squad busters. So the first thing to replace in a building are the drafty windows. How many people agree with that statement? Smart cookies. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, busted. That's clearly untrue. Um, the best investment is to address your entire building shell um, by using by doing air sealing and then applying insulation. Windows will take 30 plus years to have a return on uh, or have a return on investment of 30 plus years when you can see that savings. Um, whereas these um, whole building improvements are going to be about five years. Now, one thing I want to point out is why are you feeling drafts? You are feeling drafts around your windows, probably. But this is the process of convection, meaning that when warm air hits the window, um, the warm air is going to be absorbed, it's going to be cool, and that's going to create this current that's going to be drafty. Doesn't mean that it makes sense to replace your window, though. <clears throat> so our next myth buster, squad buster, the reason for ice dams and no snow on the roof is because the roof needs to be replaced. Who agrees? So it's a, it's a common misconception, but of course, um, you're having warm air escape your roof um, because it's not insulated. So that's where you're going to see melting and then refreezing to form the ice dams. Uh, we need to address that by by adding air sealing, by air sealing that and adding insulation. And then a common refrain also, heating with wood or pellets is already so cheap, there isn't much room for improvement. 
well, it's cheap in some ways, but if you're cutting the wood yourself or having to procure wood, it can be a hassle. And, you know, it's a hassle to burn all the time. What are we seeing in our customers that are burning wood? You're going to be lowering all your fuel usage because you're going to be retaining the heat in your home, and you're going to save about two to three quarts of wood per year on average. So tremendous savings, even for those who are burning wood. And that, very commonly heard, at least in my experience, is, well, our home is new, so it must be efficient. No, <laughs> not necessarily. That depends on who built the home. So a house that was built in 2013 had 42 air changes a day. The Vermont average is 24, and the recommended is eight. So clearly, that's no guarantee of a house that couldn't be improved. <coughs> so then, now, I'd like to get like to survey you and get some responses here as to what you think uses the most energy in your home. And as I read these, if you could just raise your hand if you think that this particular appliance or thing in your home is actually sucking the most energy. So hot water heating. Who thinks that's the primary use of energy? Rain <laughs> Lighting and appliances. Heating. <laughs> air conditioning, <laughs> refrigeration, okay. Well, as many of you knew, of course, it's almost 60% of your energy needs, <clears throat> of your energy, is going to space heating or heating the spaces in your home that you live in. So what is the average heat squad customer seeing? you're seeing a savings of an average of 250 to 300 gallons of heating fuel annually. So that's tremendous. Now, why are we wanting to start with basements and attics? Because we have to understand how we're losing energy, how we're losing conditioned air or heated air or air conditioned air in our home. So because buildings are under pressure, um, you're going to have cold air enter through the rim joists, through the basement area of your home, and then it's going to escape through the attic. This is called the stack effect or the chimney effect. Same concept. Um, so if we can stop the air from penetrating and entering in through the basement, and then also stop the air from being able to escape through the attic, that's where we're gonna be able to retain the heat in our home. The opposite effect is going to happen in summer, enter through the attic and escape through the basement. All right, at this point, we're going to discuss what happens at an energy audit. I'm going to pass this off to our in-house energy auditor, John Birch. Hi. Uh, like Jane said, uh, my name is John Birch. I'm one of the two in-house energy auditors at the Heat Squad. I've uh, met some of you, met Jonathan over the years, and uh, I've done uh, a lot of work up in the area. I just want to say kudos to the Norwich community. Uh, we have done yeah, dozens, right? Dozens and dozens and dozens of audits up in Norwich. It's a very um, progressive community. People are very concerned about uh, energy, and um, it's, it's, it's always a treat coming up to Norwich, um, and not just because of uh, King Arthur Flower. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, when we come in and do energy audits, um, it's a totally comprehensive energy audit experience. Um, we do the blower door test, um, both Corey and myself, he's around their energy auditor, uh, complete visual inspection of the building, attics, basements, crawl around all over the place, get a little bit dirty. Uh, we're able to do infrared imaging uh, when the cold temperatures allow it uh, in the winter and some of the shoulder seasons. This time of year it's not really super feasible, but uh, we also look over your heating system and of course health and safety is, is super important, so we do some checks there. Um, and yeah, we can do these energy audits um, year round. Uh, just a quick word about, about blower doors. It's a, uh, it's a very important step in the energy auditing process. Um, and the way I explain it to customers, when we have a blower door here, we're hoping to set one up in a doorway, but it's not really going to work for a couple of different reasons. But essentially, we set up a blower door where you have the house totally sealed up, all the windows closed, exterior doors closed, everything's sealed up, and we, and we put the blower door in an exterior doorway. Uh, there's a large fan here. <coughs> uh, it fits in this little 
gap. There's a couple of uh, hoses that measure pressures. Um, and the way I explain it to people is if, if you had a, a balloon you were trying to blow up, and that balloon had a whole bunch of pinholes in it, you would have to work really, really hard to get that balloon inflated and stay inflated. Um, if it only had a couple of holes, you wouldn't have to work nearly as hard. So if your house is really leaky, the fan is going to have to work really, really hard to get the house to blow up, quote unquote. If it doesn't have to work very hard at all, well, then the house is, is relatively tight. Um, so we have some equipment that measures pressures and things like that. So um, it's, it's a very important, uh, very important tool, a very important step in the energy auditing process. We can come up with uh, some numbers that tell us your air exchanges, air exchanges per day, things like that. Um, and also with the blower door running, typically we depressurize the house, we push air out of the house, which then forces the house to pull in air wherever it can. Um, and we can walk around and feel those drafts. Um, and with the infrared camera, we can also see in the winter months where that cold air is getting pulled in. Okay. <clears throat> Um, our energy audit report, it's, uh, it's a really neat piece of software. Uh, we've worked really hard over the years to find a piece of software that's going to uh, work for us and uh, also be really easy to understand for homeowners. Um, it's developed by uh, Keg System Software um, at Earth Advantage Institute, some, some great folks out of Oregon that have developed this software platform. Um, and this is just the cover page. Um, it, it's very easy to understand. Shows your house before and after, estimated energy savings, annualized energy costs, gallons saved, and then a nice metric here about uh, carbon reduction. So, um, and then the, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the report goes into um, more detail later on about specific recommendations, specific improvements. Um, John, when do you, yep. you give the other report? What's that? When do you give them the other report? Yeah, it's all it's all same day. It's all right there during the during the audit <coughs> experience. Um, I've worked in a number of different capacities over the years with different companies and um, a lot of times it would take you know weeks to get people energy audit reports and we really pride ourselves on being able to do the energy audit and give people their energy audit results right there on site. We go over it with you and then we'll also email you the PDF so you have it. Um, but um, so yeah, the, the advantages to doing efficiency improvements, I mean typically the things that the people think of first is well certainly you're gonna you're gonna save money that's kind of the bullseye um, but there's there's also a myriad of uh, uh, of other advantages to having your house um, better insulated and and more airtight obviously you're gonna save on heating and, and cooling um, it's gonna be a more comfortable house um, gonna be less drafty warmer in winter um, a lot of uh, homes especially up in Norwich have completely empty exterior walls. So getting those exterior walls insulated is really going to um, reduce exterior noise. Um, it can really help with rodents and pests, and health and safety, and obviously you know increase the uh, the value of your building. There are um, a number of incentives available from Efficiency Vermont. We go through that list and let you know what those expected incentives are going to be. They call them incentives, but essentially they're they're rebates for the work you, that you can uh, that you can have done, and uh, those rebates are up to uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Um, so, what is a comprehensive energy um, path, path and plan? Well, well, the first thing you want to do is, is make your home as efficient as possible by re reducing the energy needs um, by making thermal improvements. And that's going to include making the home as, as tight as possible, um, sealing up most of the major leaks. Um, and, and in a lot of homes, that, you know, especially sort of the Norwich typical home, you know, the, the air leakage rates, and really, honestly, in, in Vermont in general, the air leakage rates are, are um, huge. They're, they're massive. Um, they're, they're far, far above any national averages. We have the oldest housing stock in the country. So our, our air exchange rates are huge. Um, and, and so making the kinds of reductions that we're talking about in these homes, we typically shoot for about a 30% reduction in air exchange. And, and getting those kind of reductions, we're not talking about walking around with a caulking gun and putting in door seals. Well, that's a good thing. What we're really looking at is, is, is really painting with a broad brush and creating air barriers where there currently isn't one. And uh, so that's going to include a comprehensive treatment to the attic flat or attic slopes um, and a lot of times basements and exterior walls. So a lot of times, you know, a, a really comprehensive approach to those um, those areas is, is where you're going to get your air exchange reduction, the kind of air exchange reductions we're, <clears throat> we're, we're shooting for. So 
by adding insulation, by, by creating um, good air seals where we don't have it, that's the first step, sort of lowering the heating load of the building. Um, and then we can start talking about installing more efficient um, and, and renewable um, heating equipment. You know, it, I don't know if it's an American thing or what, but, but a lot of people tend to really get excited about mechanical fixes and like, oh, it's really this cool fancy thing. It's going to be a lot more efficient and save you a bunch of money. But, you know, heat pumps are amazing and, and certainly a, a very important part of, of any sort of um, comprehensive energy plan for your home. But if you just went out in an old leaky farmhouse and installed a bunch of heat pumps, sure, maybe you'll save some money, but you're really just going to more efficiently be wasting heat. So the, the first thing we want to do is really hold on to the heat you're creating in your home, however you're creating it, and then we can start talking about um, introducing some more efficient heating systems that are going to be able to be more properly sized and, and be able to give you way more bang for your buck. Um, so step one, insulation, air sealing. Step two, start talking about um, highly efficient heating systems. And then step three, um, solar power. <laughs> Brand new homes that are being built, they're being built, built with uh, super high R values. They're being made as tight as possible. Um, they're being typically heated with heat pumps or possibly some, some, uh, some renewables. Um, and, and then the last step is the photovoltaics. I call that kind of the unicorns and rainbows. Heat pumps and, and photovoltaics is better than <laughs> unicorns and rainbows scenario. It's, uh, it can really be fantastic. So um, first step in terms, of, uh, in terms of our process, you can sign up for an energy audit, it's 150 bucks. Um, I think we're scheduling out now what, a couple next, next week. <laughs> oh, yeah, next week. Uh, in the fall, when everybody starts thinking about their energy bills, we have a much longer wait, but right now we can get in there and see you, see you next week. Um, you need to just show up. Typically, it takes probably somewhere in the ballpark of about three hours. More older, bigger, complicated houses, maybe closer to four. A little bit more straightforward branches, maybe a little bit less than that, but right around three hours. Um, have some people, uh, you know, the decision makers present. Um, go to the audit, and we'll basically present everything. And, and on some occasions, people are like, oh my gosh, this is great, let's go, here we go, let's, let's go for it. But usually there's some, some, some time needed to let things kind of percolate and, and, and talk it over. So typically we'll follow up with you probably the following week, say, hey, do you have any questions? Are you ready to take the next steps? Hey, let's get some, uh, some, some, uh, some home performance uh, <laughs> contractors out there. Um, our energy audit report will make a list of specific recommendations. Um, with each recommendation will be a price range listed and a specific savings number associated with each measure. So typically when Corey and I are in the homes, you know, we'll put things in the order that makes sense in our heads, uh, but obviously the homeowners are gonna be in the best position to make those kinds of decisions. So once you decide on the work scope that makes sense for you and your family and your budget, um, we can recommend home performance contractors in your area. We have sort of a stable of guys that we've worked with over the years, feel really good about recommending them. They would come out to your house, they get a copy of the auto report, everybody's on the same sheet of music, you're an educated uh, homeowner, it's generally a, a pretty greasy um, setup, and they'll give you a specific number for the work that you wanna have done. That seems like a good fit, you would just move through the process with them, and then on the back end, once the work is completed, come back to the home and test the house out and see how much tighter they made the house, which is kind of the brass ring, which is what we're going for. Do a quality control inspection of all they work, make sure everything looks good. And then if everything looks great, submit it to Efficiency Vermont, which then releases your rebates and incentives back to you. So, you know, we sort of hold your hand throughout the process, run some interference with contractors, bless their hearts. Sometimes they need a little bit of nudging every now and then. Hey, we got to max them with their estimates, et cetera, et cetera, so we can help move that process along. Um, and we've sort of tied up with a bow at the end. So it's a, uh, it's a pretty good setup and, and one that uh, homeowners really seem to appreciate <laughs> and it works really well for them. Um, yeah, so the projects themselves, you know, sometimes they're relatively straightforward if you decide on maybe a smaller work scope, but the kind of bigger work scopes that we're talking about more of a comprehensive energy plan um, and moving towards some of the net zero stuff that we're talking about, you know, it's probably gonna be closer to a, to a week or a couple weeks project. Um, and yeah, like I've mentioned, you know, attics and basements, tops and bottoms are typically where we'll start and focus a lot of our energies. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of different things there. So, um, so these are just some before and afters. You know, basements uh, tend to offer huge opportunities in Vermont. 
a lot of times people don't really consider basements to be really even part of their house. It's kind of this like spooky place, maybe where they keep some of their canned goods. And um, but uh, it offers a lot of energy saving opportunities. Um, a lot of folks think that I, I hear it a lot, like, oh well, my basement doesn't really matter because heat rises. So it's not entirely true. Hot air rises, right? It's more buoyant, like a hot air balloon does in fact rise. We all know that. But heat itself always moves from warm to cold. So if you have a cold basement with you know, thick field stone foundations, even a poured foundation without any insulation, that, that's, those, are, those walls are very, very cold. They don't offer really any R value whatsoever. They have about the same R value as a, as a window, okay? Anywhere from R1 to R3, depending on who you ask. But there's, there's very, very little resistance to heat flow. So they're very cold. So <coughs> your heating systems are typically down there, your hot water system's down there. So all that heat that's getting generated is getting sucked up and absorbed out of those walls. You're also losing heat on your first floor to that cold space. So by insulating these exterior walls, in this case with field soda, probably be spray foam insulation, um, a poured foundation or block foundation, you can get away with rigid foam, but getting your basement insulated and air sealed typically offers massive savings and huge increases in comfort. And it really changes the whole nature of your basement. Um, and you can see, I think in this next photo, yeah, so this is sort of a, an after photo. You can see there's a heavy duty vapor barrier down there. There's been a sump pump installed to deal with any moisture that might come in the house. Uh, this is a heat pump hot water heater. Um, and you can see some uh, spray foam insulation up the walls. And I'm sure that this door here has been probably insulated on the other side and really effectively air sealed. So if you know somebody asked me like, hey, what's the one thing I could probably do? Um, I would really, really strongly recommend getting your basement retrofitted. Yeah, Josh. Um, I'd like to endorse the, the, the you talked about the, the, the way you can perceive it in the change in comfort. Yeah. Um, when we had our basement insulated, yep. I walked downstairs the next morning barefoot, and our house is, has some crawl space and some basement. So I was walking over the crawl space, which was not insulated, and I stepped over the threshold onto the half of the house that nah, had been insulated, and I felt like I was stepping onto a radiant heated floor. Like, I mean, it was, so much warmer, it was comfortable on my bare feet, which of course it had always been this cold surface yeah. before. It was it was quite shocking the difference. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, it's profound. It, it's a uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Um, let's see a couple notes here from insulation vapor barrier, uh, intumescent paint, uh, any exposed foam according to uh, Vermont uh, code has to be covered with an intumescent paint, which is a, provides a 15 minute thermal barrier. It's a code thing. It's a little bit expensive, but it's just something that needs to happen and needs to be done. Um, yeah. And heat pump hot water heaters, totally amazing. Um, it, it's hard for me to think of a hot water system that, um, just about any hot water system that you have, um, I, I think that a heat pump hot water heater would outperform it and save you money. Um, especially if you have electric hot water um, or potentially a standalone uh, propane unit. Without question, I would strongly recommend heat pump water. Yeah? Is that better than hot water on demand systems? Yeah, so um, hot water on demand systems um, can be a good fit for the right sort of circumstance. Um, the, the, the typical energy cost on a heat pump hot water heater for a family of four in Vermont based on our um, on our electric rates, they're electrically operated, uh, I think comes in somewhere in the neighborhood of about $180 a year for a family of four. So if you have a family smaller than that, um, you could be looking at energy costs, you know, a little over a hundred bucks. Um, they also dehumidify as sort of a natural part of what they do. So if you're running dehumidifiers in your basement, getting the place better insulated in the air seal will help with the humidity in general, but they also do some dehumidification, and those little dehumidifiers, even the Energy Star ones, will definitely spin your meter. I think, as most of you know. Um, so, and the there, there's a number of models out there. The GE model, um, which is a great model, it's one I have in my house. It's a thousand dollars, and there's a four hundred dollar rebate on them right now. So you can get one for six hundred dollars. Um, just did an audit this morning on a house with an electric hot water heater. Um, family of six, um, and their estimated energy savings by switching over to a heat pump hot water heater was, I think, five hundred and sixty dollars a year in savings. So they will they will pay for this this unit in two years. Yeah. 
my right that the basements, or the, the space they're in, they have to be at a minimum temperature or else they don't work very well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, you know, they do have some limitations. They do lower the temperature of your basement slightly. Certainly something worth exploring. Loans. So I'm done. Um, feel free to ask me any questions afterwards, um, or if there's any questions. You mentioned yeah. that it's hard this time of year to do the thermal imaging. Mm -hmm. So does that matter if we if we sign up for an energy audit? I mean, what's the? So it really doesn't. You know, I, I think that um, you know, since I've been working for HeatSwap about a year and a half, I, I was doing energy audits for years before that. You know, I've done 400 energy audits with HeatSwap. Um, been in lots and lots of buildings um, with my skill set I'm I'm really able to evaluate what's going on in the house and don't necessarily need infrared infrared can show us some some interesting things if we're wondering about what's going on in maybe an exterior wall cavity um, but there's some some exploration we can do some physical inspections that can tell us whether those are empty or insulated sometimes cathedral ceilings they can be interesting but you know they're they're um, it's a neat tool and, and can be really a, a powerful sort of image for homeowners, but it's, it's not an essential part of an energy audit. The, the numbers can, um, you know, we can generate all the numbers and do all the savings estimates that we need to do with, without the infrared. Yeah. And I, I sat in on one today and there was a temperature differential enough that the heat was pumped up in the house to get some imaging. And then you can, in the deep, deep of summer, reverse it. If you have cooling in your home, air conditioning, you can put it in the air conditioning mode and get a reverse image, so it could still. Yeah, it, it, it can happen. It's, uh, yeah, it's not mission critical. But if it's something you're really interested in and really want to see, then sure, schedule your energy audit for uh, for fall or, or for the winter, but it's, it's like I said, it's not really a mission critical. Yeah? We installed the heat pump. Hot water heat uh -huh. in our basement and yep. it noticeably cooled our basement. Yep. Um, so would you, and so then the first floor, padding around on your bare feet is quite uncomfortable. So hmm. would you recommend insulating between those floors or not? Um, I'd have to see the situation. But, um, you know, th that, that could potentially help. So heat pumps, and is somebody going to talk about heat pumps at some point? I am? No. Oh, sorry. This is it. Heat pump technology. Heat pumps basically they don't they don't make heat, they just pull it from somewhere and put it somewhere else. So um, a heat pump on water heater, it's all self-contained unit. It's basically pulling heat out of the air and pushing it into your hot water system. <coughs> they work great right next to an oil boiler or something like that. They can just pull on that waste heat out of the air um, and put it in the water. So it does in fact lower the temperature, your air temperature. Typically somewhere between three and six degrees. Sounds like maybe yours is maybe even a little bit higher than that. Um, sure, I, I think potentially some insulation in the in the floor could help with some of that comfort. Um, I really have to see it to be able to. Um, a, a lot of times um, when we're thinking about basements and how to best treat basements and insulate basements, by insulating the walls, what you're doing is you're 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 keeping all of the waste heat, whether it's from your ductwork or all of your oil boiler distribution, all that piping and stuff that runs through there, all that heat that's lost out of there is it's traveling from your boiler or your furnace to your registers or your um, baseboard uh, hot water, that there's heat loss there. So by insulating those exterior walls, all that heat loss that used to get absorbed through those exterior walls is now gonna make its way up into your house. So depending on your system and your setup, sometimes you don't wanna discourage that heat from moving up in there, but Maybe we can talk afterwards and get a little bit more information. But, any other questions? Great, I'm going to turn. Yeah? You also do it in New Hampshire or just Vermont? Vermont only. You know what I mean? Yeah. That works too. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you. Thank you. <laughs> any other questions? Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, we do have an, a an energy loan that can be used throughout the entire state of Vermont currently. Um, um, and it's available to all income levels, but you're going to be paying different rates based on your income. So we try to help people who have lower incomes. Um, and it's up to $40,000. So the heat saver loan is very similar to ours, but you only take out $35,000. So that's one benefit with our loan. Um, it can be used for all efficiency things, such as weather, obviously weatherization, efficient heating systems, 
renewable technology also, some solar you can also use with this, um, heat pumps, Tesla power wall, and shell upgrades that you're going to need to make these improvements, such as roofing, um, siding, foundation windows and doors that you're going to need potentially with some projects. Um, however, with um, if you are using it for solar, you're going to be definitely paying for 0.99% uh, because we don't have a buy down for um, solar. We only have that for the efficiency improvements. Um, another benefit with our loan <coughs> is that you can choose on bill repayment with GMP. That way you don't have two pieces of paper, two bills, if that's helpful to you and if you're interested, that's available. And you can use solar credits to pay back your loan. So that's one other benefit with our loan. Now, here's a little case study um, of a woman who is paying $224 a month with her energy costs at the outset. Um, she did some improvements that totaled about $6,000, as you can see. She had the $1,400 in incentives, um, and therefore she was paying $4,500. Um, after improvements, she's paying $148 a month. With the loan payment of $63 a month, she's only paying $211 a month, including her loan payment. So as you can see, she's cash positive from the beginning with this loan. So she has 13 more dollars, and of course, within the time frame that she pays off her loan, six or seven years or whatever it may have been, um, she's free and clear, and she's paying significantly less. So as you can tell, you can save immediately. That's why this is important. That's why this is really attractive. Um, it's really thinking about the cost of not going ahead with these improvements, rather than thinking about the initial outlay. Um, make it so that it's workable for your budget. Um, so, how will this work once you have completed the work? As um, John was saying, we'll come back out, um, we'll make sure that we do the quality control test, make sure that they didn't miss anything, that there wasn't, maybe they didn't put the paint on, all these kinds of things that need to happen. Um, and then we'll, of course, do the second blower door test to make sure that there were the savings that we anticipated and need to see. Um, and then, of course, you're going to get the check sent back to you with your incentives. And that's a wrap. <laughs> So um, if you are interested in having an energy audit, if you haven't had that or you want an evaluation with us, all you have to do is go back to the sign-up sheet um, and indicate that if you, if you don't mind. Um, and if you can put your phone number, it is easier for us because we do like to ask a few brief questions about like square footage of your home so we can schedule more easily. With that said, I'm going to go ahead with the solar presentations. Or sorry, with Bob. Bob. So um, Bob Walker is going to talk about the new Zen program, which is a comprehensive approach um, that is newly available. Go ahead. Thank you, Jim. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, so Zero Energy Now is a program that's been recently put together by the Building, um, Building Performance Professional Association, which is the trade group of all the home performance contractors in the state. They wanted to be able to do more than just home weatherization when they're in the home. So they put this program together and it's been supported by Green Mountain Power. And we'll talk more about the incentives that are available in a minute. Um, it's a comprehensive streamlined program where, uh, again, the contractors will come in and, not do, and, and do not just the uh, weatherization work, but you can also, they will also do. Um, renewable heating and uh, solar electricity, or they will subcontract with other contractors to do that work all at once. And they'll act as the single point of uh, contact uh, for you on this program. There are minimum goals to participate in the program. You have to get at least 10% uh, energy savings through the uh, efficiency work. You have to get at least 50% reduction in your uh, pre-work uh, fossil fuel use. And at the end of the game, at least 50% total of your energy has to be coming from renewable sources. If you can achieve those goals, then again, there are some incentives that are available, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Um, there's very much like the heat squad um, model, there's one contractor that you will work with and they will subcontract with the other contractors or if they have those um, programs in-house then they'll do them themselves. Um, so it makes it easier for you, you don't have to 
deal with a whole bunch of other contractors. Uh, the, the main players in the program are the Building Professional uh, Building Performance Professional Association, uh, who are all um, BPI certified. Again, these are all the home performance contractors in the state. Uh, and it's not all of the home performance contractors, it's kind of a select group of those who decided that they wanted to um, participate in this program. It's a pilot program for this year only. It ends at the end of the year. Um, and Renewable Energy Vermont, a bunch of the solar dealers in the state are also providing their services for the program. Uh, in addition to you know, securing stable energy costs going forward, there are up to $5,000 of financial incentives, and those are above and beyond the home performance, the $2,500 of incentives from Efficiency Vermont. And that helps to pay for the renewable power and renewable heating uh, systems that you would put in. And it, um, in addition, there are energy savings and quality service guarantees. So on the energy savings, um, the contractor at the end of the job, you know, will look at all the work that you've done and say that, okay, we estimate that this is how much energy you're going to be using. And they'll actually do that before they do the work so that you have a sense of, does this make financial sense for me to do this? And they will guarantee those energy savings for one year. And if not, the uh, program will make up the difference in the energy uh, use that you that you used over what was estimated. And then quality service guarantee. All of the contractors in the program have a quality service um, guarantee to make sure that you're happy with how the work was done. One, um, this program can, is available throughout the state, but the $5,000 um, incentive for this year is available only in the uh, for homes or businesses. It's open to anybody who wants to go in it. But the incentive is available only to buildings that were previously served by CDPS. And it's kind of a map of those towns and, and areas. And you can call um, either Green Mountain Power or the uh, Zero Energy Now program and find out if your home qualifies for the incentives, if you're not sure. Um, the, the kind of flow of work is very much um, like what John um, described. In fact, NeighborWorks is one of the Zero Energy Now um, contractors. Um, but you basically contact the program, meet with one of the certified energy contractors. They will do a, um, a whole analysis on your home, and they have some software that they put the um, findings into, and it will generate for you a list of measures that um, you could do to save energy, and they can, will tell you what the cost, anticipated cost for those measures are, the anticipated energy and dollar savings, and then sit down with you to decide what measures you want to do to, you know, improve the efficiency through tightening up an insulation, uh, adding uh, either uh, wood heat or heat pumps, um, and then also adding renewable power. Um, in, so this is just a list of some of the different incentives that are available to you. There's, we've talked about a couple times with the Home Performance with Energy Star, $2,500 for that. It's $2,000 is for the weatherization work and $500 available for high efficiency heating system change out. Um, if you were to go with a new um, high efficiency wood centralized wood pellet heating systems, there's up to $5,500 of incentives for those. 30% uh, federal tax credit for solar and then the $5,000 for the uh, Zero Energy Now program. Uh, financing, again, very similar uh, to what's available for NeighborWorks. That's one of the, the financing options. Uh, Vermont State Employees Credit Union has a very similar program and uh, actually two different products that they have that are very similar to what NeighborWorks financing is. So this is another kind of case study like um, 
they uh, never showed. Uh, but looking at again, including heat pumps and solar. So the weatherization work done was $8,000. The uh, heat pumps were $14,000. Um, the heat pump hot water heater $2,200 and the solar $20,000. So the total cost of the job was $44,200. And then these are all the incentives that were available for doing that work. So the net cost of the job was $32,400. And then um, they got uh, financing and uh, I believe this was at a 2.99% interest rate. Yeah, there it is. For a 15 year term, they ended up with 90% uh, energy savings through all of the work that was done. So previous to the work being done, they were paying about $256 per month for energy alone. After the work, they were paying $26 per month for energy work, plus $224 for the financing for a total of $249. So again, they're getting all this work done, saving money, not a lot of money, but they're saving money, and they're having a much more comfortable home, uh, redu reducing the greenhouse gas emissions and uh, all the other benefits that come with this work. And after 15 years, right. 26 yeah, That's right. That's right. And that's and also that's at two dollars a gallon of oil, and it's not going to stay this long forever, folks. So uh, enjoy it while you got it. But uh, fuel is going to increase. So yeah, after 15 years, it's it's uh, really making a lot of money there. And that's not factoring in like any drastic increases or any kind of legislation. Right. Right. So um, if you're interested in the program, there are handouts over here about this program. There's two handouts, and there's a sign-up sheet if you're interested. Um, with the contacts for getting in touch with the program are here, and I can also have those folks follow up with you. Um, one other quick thing, I don't have time to really go into this, but there's another really cool program that uh, Efficiency Vermont is uh, helping to launch. It's the uh, Vermont Home Energy Profile. And what it's going to be uh, able to do is to provide basically an energy score for your home. So especially for homeowners who are making their homes more energy efficient, uh, it's a very small add-on cost to have a profile and a score given to your home that will then at the time of selling your home help you be able to you know prove that you have a an energy efficient home that's worth more and you'll help get a lot of the money back out of it because it's more valuable home. Um, any quick questions on the program before we go on to the next folks? I'm gonna be around and <coughs> talk to folks afterwards. Thanks. Okay, so the next presentation will be Jonathan's from Solflect. Uh, hello, I am Jonathan Taylor-Elford with Solflect Energy. Uh, and uh, Troy McBride, I, I think you're speaking next. I am. From Norwich Technologies, another solar installer. Um, talk next. So I'll cover some of the information that is universal to solar. Uh, and then a little bit about us in particular, and Troy can do uh, his bit. If I can figure it out. So I'll start with the universal information. Um, if you uh, are going solar, you have available uh, the incentives on the federal side, a 30% tax credit on the cost of your solar array. Um, in Vermont, currently available, uh, is something called the solar adder. It is additional credit that you receive on your electric bill for every kilowatt hour of solar generated above and beyond plain net metering. Um, in New Hampshire, uh, there's a rebate available from the state for solar purchases. Uh, in addition, both, uh, uh, well, New Hampshire doesn't have sales tax, but Vermont excludes sales tax on uh, solar. Um, and in both cases, there are 
property tax exemptions in Vermont. It's across the state, certainly for, for residential size solar. Uh, if you add solar to your home, it will be ignored when your property is assessed for purposes of, of property taxation. And in New Hampshire, if you are in a yellow town, then solar is exempted. And if you're in a tan town, there's partial exemptions. You'd have to uh, look at the specifics. And if you're in uh, a white town, then you should talk with your select company. <laughs> <laughs> so process to go solar. Uh, in a way, uh, as with Heat Squad, it's, it's quite uh, simple in general. Begins with a site assessment. Uh, someone comes to, of course, answer any questions that you have. Um, one of the things we want to do is take what's called a solar access measurement. This is an example of a solar access diagram where you're seeing what's the shade profile. How, how much open sky is there to see? Because the solar panel is only going to make electricity if light lands on it. Um, and, uh, and if you have good solar access, then you can, you're going to get your best value with solar installed on your property. Uh, and if your solar access, or for some other reason, you know, if your solar access is not so good, or there's some other reason why it doesn't work for solar to be on site uh, at your home, then there's community solar, where the solar panels are off site, but you still get credit on your electric bill. You've still done the same thing. You put renewable solar electricity into the system, you get credit for it anyway. There's a little bit of permitting involved in Vermont. It, you know, it, it, it's as if it weren't there. It's so easy uh, for at the residential scale. In New Hampshire, a little bit more complicated, but still not really terribly complicated. New Hampshire, the, the main difference is that you're going to need to get a local town permit, uh, it, it, depending on the installation and depending on the town. Um, and in Vermont, uh, you won't need that. And then comes the day. Uh, assuming you've gone forward, that installation happens if it's at your home. Uh, I know with us, and I think also with our technologies, typically uh, it's done in a day. Um, and uh, in our uh, particular case, the community solar parks that we have, we have one uh, in development now, and end of this month, plus or minus a few days, uh, is when it should go. And then you have uh, a reduced electric bill. Um, it's, uh, it's common uh, that in the longer sunlight uh, months of the year, your electric bill might run negative. Uh, um, this is in a Vermont case where it's all translated into dollar terms. In New Hampshire case, you can have a, a surplus kilowatt hours from a, from a month's generation kept in what they call a kilowatt hour bank. So you can apply it to a future bill. Uh, and then in the winter, when the solar array is not nearly as productive, and typically people are using more electricity, you use up that credit that you built up. So now to SolarFlect in particular, um, uh, we specialize in the tracker. It has to be mounted uh, in the ground. Um, and it's called a tracker because it is tracking the sun. It, uh, that center post in the front there is going to just keep pointing right at the middle of the sun. Uh, the reason to track is to get more electricity out of the solar panels. Because, uh, and I'll, I'll go to that in a second, why that, how do you get more electricity out? Um, and we have, there's some unique engineering features to our tracker that reduce the cost uh, and, um, compared to traditional trackers. So the first reason that tracking helps is if your solar panel is facing directly at the sun and the light is coming in perpendicularly, you're going to get more power density out of that sunlight. And you're going to capture the full availability of sunlight. Um, and that will be true throughout the whole day. In effect, a tracker is able to get a longer day in the summer half of the year. Uh, in the summer half of the year, the sun, in, in this part of the world, the northern hemisphere, the sun is rising out of the northeast and it's setting into the northwest, the tracker can move to see it. Whereas a fixed array, you know, your traditional south-facing array, those that morning light and afternoon light, evening light, will be coming from behind it. 
so it'll lose that some of that light. And uh, by just by the default of its performance, the tracker sheds snow automatically. Um, it sleeps vertically at night, so any snow that may have fallen during the day is going to slide off. Snow that comes at night is going to go past it. Uh, a little, if it's sticky, a little skim might be there. But as soon as the sun comes back out, it's facing right on, and it warms up very quickly because the solar panels are dark and melts off the snow within an hour or two. It's a steeper in the winter. Huh? It's steeper in the winter. And, and right, and the angle, just because the sun is low relative to the horizon in winter time, the angle of the of the panels is is, is relatively steep even in the middle of the day um, in winter. Um, Whereas, obviously, a uh, fixed array can build up a lot of snow. Uh, and in this case, this is the one, these are the ones at King Arthur Flower. This is from two winters ago. Last, this past winter, it didn't really make that much of a difference. But two winters ago, it made a very big difference. Um, uh, and you can see so much snow has been falling and then eventually sliding off. It's built up a bank at the bottom. The snow, new snow can't even fall off. And that is, that's, that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna, yes? Um, so I live on a 100 by 100 lot, and when the house is in the middle of it, and a bunch of trees, and a garden, and, and, <laughs> um, and I'm in Hartford, so we have zoning, and I'm wondering about needing a permit to get a tracker down on the ground. Well, I think I don't on the roof. Uh, and you, you also don't need a local, in Vermont, you don't need a local zoning permit, um, town permit, for residential scale ground mounted solar. It's, it's excluded. And the question number two is, um, I think the bill that the governor just vetoed has a thing about preferred locations for solar panels that are on the roof. Is that going to affect you? Um, uh, not not at the residential scale. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I forget the specifics of the bill, and of course it was vetoed. But um, small scale solar was sort of. In, in, I know in a lot of the other legal language going around, small scale solar is treated the same whether it's on the ground or on the roof. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and I will be here afterwards if anyone would like to chat, and I'll pass it to Troy. Well, they're transferring. I just one thing: uh, the the Zero Energy Now program, um, the solar part of that can be either a community solar or an out of the house solar, and uh, apply for those incentives. What the rest? We did not talk about rest, and that would go way beyond our time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank So we are another uh, solar installer. Uh, we happen to be from the same town as, as Solarflect, and uh, we work together through Solarize Norwich uh, to offer special pricing in Norwich but for four years now. And uh, uh, we are another option, essentially. Uh, we offer fixed arrays, either mounted on the roof or on the ground. We have a great crew down in, in White River Junction. Uh, we hire a lot of local uh, contractors, such as electricians. So you really, it's a, it's a strong uh, local commitment uh, to get your energy through, through solar. Really briefly, uh, solar is really a win-win-win now. It's a, maybe it, uh, five, ten years ago, it was not necessarily a financial win. But right now, you know, clearly an environmental win uh, financially, just like uh, Jane was showing on uh, Heat Squad and Bob was showing for Zero Energy Now, you're net positive right away. You're paying that money already. You're already paying for electricity. Why not take that same money or a little less and get your power for solar? It's almost like renting a house versus owning a house. You're actually spending that money either way. When you own the house, that money is going towards something that you're going to own when you're renting the house. You know, it's just going to, uh, uh, towards that, uh, towards the owner of that home. And then it's it's local power from the upper valley. 
uh, and solar, as, uh, <coughs> as John and Jane said, it completes the uh, comprehensive energy approach. This is uh, Edgewater Farm. It's got a beautiful all black solar array on their roof. Uh, so get your vegetables there. And not only is it local vegetables, but it's local power. This is just making that same point, uh, which is if you buy your solar array with cash, it's a great investment. It's on the order of 10% return. Uh, it's not many other places you can get a fixed 10% uh, return on your investment uh, these days. Uh, and so, but if you look at it from a finance standpoint, you're net positive right away. This is an example for an array uh, uh, in Norwich. Uh, they financed 15 years at a 4.5 rate. The loan payment was $167.94. Their solar savings on average is $201. So right away, they have a 30, uh, you know, almost $34 uh, savings a month. Those first 15 years, they're saving money. And then after those 15 years, these panels are warranted 25 years, 30 to 40 year lifetime. You know, they're uh, saving considerable amount of money. So solar makes sense you know, and environmentally, makes sense financially. It doesn't matter whether you go with a tracker system or a fixed system or another installer, it just you know, it's the right <coughs> I'm just uh, going to show just some photos. Uh, we have a number of residential and uh, commercial uh, systems uh, throughout the Upper Valley. It's just a house in Norwich, uh, a ground mount array. It's another option. It's a, a fixed array for uh, uh, for fields. Uh, it's a all American made system in Norwich up on. Uh, Near where Linda lives. <laughs> Patrol Road. Road, that's it again. Uh, this is Hanover Police Department. We installed that with Energy Emporium. Um, this is the oldest barn in Norwich. Uh, it's an all black system. And I encourage you to drive by it on Goodrich Four Corners. You won't even see the systems there. It fits in perfectly with a, uh, one of the oldest barns in Norwich. Uh, this is just a highlight of. My final thing is Jonathan did at the very end. He said, "What you know? What a little about Norwich technology." So we install, we pre-assemble our system, and that way we ensure the highest quality uh, systems. We do everything ground level, do all the wiring and test in our in our workshop in Whitaker Junction. Uh, Kimberly Academy is uh, currently installing their third array with us. They're uh, one of us several schools that. Uh, Owns arrays through us, but for elementary school, actually purchased an array. This array is a third party owned array, so Kimball Union Academy hosts the array and then buys electricity from it. So for no money down, they uh, are able to save about 15% on their electricity uh, right away by hosting this solar array. Uh, so they actually have two ground mount arrays that they put in in addition to this. This mountain school up in Berkshire uh, has uh, some roof mounted arrays as well as a ground mount array, so they're now uh, a net zero uh, school. This is uh, Edgewater Farm, and a little bit of function for your solar panel here. This is a solar awning at, at Tan and Wits. Uh, you can sit under there and eat your ice cream. And uh, this project uh, is made in part through the North Energy Committee and a grant that they uh, received for an electric charging uh, station that uh, will be located and powered by this solar array. And so that's you know the final part of the comprehensive solar uh, comprehensive energy is uh, you know, your, your your efficiency measures and then your heating and then your electricity with solar and then your car with electricity as well. Um, and just for a little uh, flavor of our company, I'll show you a quick uh, news video about our free assembly farm. And you know, the, the one thing you can do here uh, in all these cases is 
uh, if you want to sign up for a free site visit, and uh, you know, we can uh, give you a uh, presentation of your options with uh, that at no cost. Yeah, yeah. Norwich Technology says it has the new tape on how to install solar panels where apparently you've got many that can already do it faster than anybody else about it. Our games done on location. All the components, the panel, the burgers, and other hardware, are brought to the job site to be assembled there. But the company decided there was a better way. Over the last time someone had done it, for a Washington um, came to your house and all the pieces out in your front yard and put it together and then brought it into your facility. Um, the same reason people don't do that, and the good reason for us not to do that, but um, solar installation. So, Norwich Technologies designed a system for pre assembling all these components in a controlled environment in the shop. They say you can do better quality work faster, all while minimizing external problems like the weather. Your rooftop solar modules can be built in different configurations, accommodating up to six pins. They call it the Easy Peak. Then they bring the whole thing to the site, ready to go. Early December, they demonstrated the process for the Department of Energy in Williston. After two hours of preparation on the roof, installing some hardware, the individual modules get hoisted up into position and locked into place. <coughs> a few wires, and the easy PV is ready to go. You take what has been previously a process that might take a day or more, and with an hour of roof pad, about an hour of installation time, to complete a high quality installation. Beyond speed, they say pre assembled panels are more reliable. Let's do this. Assembling and testing at the shop means it's also easier to spot and replace the effective components before they're on the roof. It's a system they say took plenty of time to develop. We've got over 10,000 hours of engineering time that we've spent doing it over and over and over and figuring out what those bottlenecks are. <laughs> they're pretty happy with what they figured out so far, but are willing to refine their designs as they learn more. <laughs> And while Norwich Technologies is amongst the first to do solar installation this way, they don't expect the exclusivity to last. We think it's an engine. We think that once we're out of the market, selling to third parties, others will work to follow us. So we're working very hard to keep that, uh, uh, that head start. It's right to do solar faster and better, more than just one panel at a time. With what's next? David Schneider, WPTZ News Channel 5. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> that was interesting. Um, and now we're going to have Commission C. Vermont speak. So, Jeff Manning is here. So, we're going to have Commission C. Vermont and John Godwin. How do you get sent to the Good morning, Yeah, do this side. Everybody yeah, the right side. But... Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Technology. <laughs> so we have a lot of good talkers up here come up here before me and do all the hard work and all the heavy lifting. I'm just going to talk about getting money back. So, <laughs> um, it, it's nice to be able to invest in your home in a way where it's going to be actually saving you money. And in addition to saving you money, it's going to be making you more comfortable. And it's going to be helping the durability of your home and getting rid of mold and hopefully getting rid of rodents and doing all of that awesome stuff. Having said all that, there's still even more money back. So as you know by now, you get money back if you do uh, if you go through a home performance program, a home performance service, have a project created, you go through the program. Uh, John or Corey at NeighborWorks or any one of the other uh, participating contractors in the state of Vermont, uh, you can get money back for this type of work that you're doing. So the first one up here is $500. That is the base amount. So if uh, the audit has been done, you're getting ready to do the work, and that is, if you get the $500, that means you met the minimum amount, which is getting 10% of air infiltration reduction on your house. So earlier when John was talking about doing the blower door test and having leaks in the house and you know feeling drafts, if you can reduce 10% of those, which in most cases is fairly easy to do, you can get $500. And that's in addition to doing any 
uh, health and safety issues that pop up. We haven't talked a lot about that, but sometimes, unfortunately, there's an issue that comes up and sometimes it can be made worse by tightening up the house. Uh, usually it's with a naturally venting, you know, fossil fuel heating system or, or water heating system. Sometimes there, it, there's a very wet basement where it, once it's been identified by the home performance contractor, the auditor, that work will be uh, that will be part of the work scope that has to be done. It has to be done before any of the efficiency work, any of the uh, weatherization work is done. So if you meet those health and safety, any health and safety problems that could arise, in addition to the 10%, you get $500 back. Now the next tier of, of air leakage reduction is 20 to 35%. So that's often achieved. That's not that unusual to get into that next tier. If you get into that next tier, that $250 is added to the $500. Um, if you meet the 35% reduction or more of air infiltration, then that $500 is added to the original $500. But you know, but they don't add this. You don't get that. That's it's not that collective. So you, if you go above and beyond the 10%, depending on how far you go, you can get either an extra 250 or an extra $500. The rest of this chart is all about insulation. So whether it's in the attic, whether it's in the walls, an exposed floor, or on the foundation walls, 40% uh, square footage, 40, 40 cents of the dollar, so 40 cents for every square foot of insulation, uh, that is that meets this chart. So if, if you have a home performance auditor in your house doing this work, they're going to make recommendations that are going to meet these minimums, going to meet these charts. In some cases, they'll go above and beyond that, and it might not be part of this chart, but these, in most cases, they're going to be recommending if you have bare walls, then you're going to fill it up with uh, dense pack cellulose, for example and you can get 40 cents for every square footage of a wall that is treated. Um, and in the attic, this is worth noting, that the actual code, this is R49, that says if you have an attic flat and you put in um, new insulation, that it has to meet R49 if the code is actually R60 right now, and it has been for about a year and a half, or, well, a little over a year. Um, the co again, contractors, if they're doing the work in your house, they're going to be bringing that up to R60. That does say R49, but um, it's actually R60. 40 cents per square foot new insulation. Uh, heat distribution improvements. At least $200 of duct sealing improvements if you have a furnace, if you have a forced air furnace. A lot of people here, I'm sure, have boilers or another source of heat, you know, it makes radiators or, or baseboard hot water. But if you have a furnace with ducts, uh, if two hundred dollars in, uh, in air sealing or of two hundred dollars in of, uh, treatment on those ducts is is met, then you can get seventy five dollars back. And um, and then the, the comprehensive retrofit. This is the last one. There's a comprehensive retrofit bonus package. So if you reduce the air leakage. Uh, Greater than 35% is measured by a pre and post lower door test, uh, an extra $250. Um, if you install insulation airs equivalent to at least 75% of the home's finished floor area, so for example, if you have a 2,000 square foot home and you install 1,000 square feet of insulation in the attic and 500 square feet of insulation in the walls, uh, the insulation must meet the above criteria for our value then you can get that extra $250. And that's a maximum of this weatherization package. You get a maximum of $2,000. You're, you're not always going to get $2,000. That is a maximum. And then you get an extra $500 if you do an upgrade on your on a central heating system. So if you have an existing boiler, if you have an existing furnace, um, and if you bring that up to, uh, it's, let's say it's 20, 30 years old, if you bring that up to Energy Star standards, so that a boiler, a, a, a propane boiler has to meet 
uh, 95% annual fuel utilization efficiency, that's the yellow sticker on the unit, uh, or a propane furnace, we have to meet that, you can get $500. That, that heating system has to be installed by an, uh, an efficiency and excellence network contractor. So there is a list of those EEN contractors on our website. And to be honest, there, I'd say more, more of them than not, in the state seem to be the EEN contractors are they're all participating in this program. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But that's these are all, you know, these are all things that you will be you would be made aware of if you're doing a home performance project anyways by your contractor. So with that heating system upgrade, the maximum amount is uh, $2,500 of, of, of cash back incentives for doing uh, for, for fulfilling that work scope that was uh, generated by the home performance audit. Does anybody here have a business? We do have a, we have another program very similar to home performance called building performance building performance and this it's as you can see it's almost identical. The cap is larger. The cap is up to five thousand dollars. This is not so much for a um, if you own a um, if you have a barber shop or a, or a law office in your house, it's not so much for something like this. This is more, this is for municipal buildings or larger, more commercial type buildings. But if you if you own one of those buildings or if you are the manager of a business in one of those buildings, this could very well be something you would be interested in because, as you see, you get a maximum amount of five thousand dollars back if you meet those requirements. That, that's that's the maximum cap. Um, so let me go back. And we also have a loan called the Heat Saver Loan. It's as you can see, it's it's really almost identical to the loan that NeighborWorks has. Um, so this is just another option for a loan. Um, and I do have some of those uh, brochures of this of this loan that are up there on the table. I also have. Uh, I have many brochures for uh, efficiency rebates on appliances for, for Energy Star appliances. Many of them are seasonal, like dehumidifiers and cool pumps. So if you have that type of equipment and you're thinking, just if you're just thinking about replacing any of those, then those brochures can come in handy. You can buy, uh, you can go to our website and you can also look at uh, a list of what are the qualifying products for any given appliance. And then purchase once you purchase the appliance, you can fill out the form and mail it in. And you get quite a bit of money back. For example, on a on a variable speed cool pump, that's six hundred dollars back. So that's like you know almost half the price of, of one of those variable speed units. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Um, the the literature is all right here on this table. I just want to point out. Yeah. So so um. If you want to take a look at some more details right here, and of course, um, all the contractors like us will be able to answer questions about these, as well as the representatives at the Right, and everything that was up on the screen is here as well. And I just in want addition to, to a lot of other stuff. I just want to point out that both the Heat Saver Loan and Neighbor Loans are um, have tiered uh, interest rates that are income related and they're, they're very generous in terms of their income levels so you should check those out they are very generous all right we're going to finish up with helen from Fremont power talking about the e-home program and again i'm just going to remind everyone that the literature is on this table with regards to loans um, and issues with our programs um and if you have any further questions everyone will be outside of the room for additional follow up And if you are interested in having an energy audit, all you have to do is go back to the start sheet, check off the audit box, and please do provide your phone number so we can have more easy questions. Okay. Good evening. My name is Helen Bruno. I'm with Green Mountain Power. I've got 10 minutes and I have five slides. So that gives me two minutes per slide. Anybody in the room wants to be my timekeeper, volunteer, then I might go first, fast, and reality. <laughs> you got it. I'll go fast on the first one, we'll give me time on the other ones, but I better stop talking and just get talking. 
All right, so I work at the Energy Innovation Center, which is in downtown Rutland. Now, why isn't this? So if you point it at the computer rather than the screen. Oh, at the computer. Oh, that is where you did this. Which side did you say? The right side. There. There you are. OK, so now let's do this. That was two minutes from the center. So I'll just have to read through this quickly. GFP is focused on a new way of doing business to meet the needs of customers with integrated energy services that help people use less energy, save money, while continuing to generate clean, effective, reliable power in Vermont. Okay, if anybody didn't know this, we are a B Corp now, probably one of the first utilities to be a B Corp. So that all fits in with that statement, the B Corp, and what myself and a group of other people, the team at the Energy Innovation Center do. We work on new energy efficient projects. So there's a whole lot of things that we're working on. Um, E-home. This is kind of like the shell of everything we do. Not everything, but a shell, big part of what we do at the EFC. And it's pretty much the same parallel path with everybody that we've heard from tonight in this room, other than solar. We don't do solar, but you're going to hear a little bit about what we do related to solar. So we have um, our focus is saving you money, improve comfort, and use less energy. All right. Um, green energy is one of our main focuses down there. In the EIC, we have classrooms coming in. We do education for kids. I go out, let's see, at the end of this week, I'm in Roxbury for a whole day. So we do a lot in that room. The pilot projects, um, the e-home projects, and also an education thing. All right, so one of the products that we have, we have a heat pump or offerings is we have a heat pump heating and cooling um, leasing program. The reason that we've gone into heat pump a leasing program is because we have found that there's many Vermonters who cannot pay their bills. And we get a lot of phone calls on this, so this is why we went in this direction. Um, I'm not prepared tonight, especially with time, to talk about the heat pump technology. And I thought John was going to do it. John thought I was going to do it. Jeff thought I was going to do it. And I thought Jeff was going to do it, maybe. So if you want to talk more about the heat pump technology, I'd be happy to spend a little time with you afterwards or give you a phone number, and we can talk about that. But what we do in this program is we have a team at the Energy Innovation Center who will take phone calls from our customers, we'll spend some time on the phone with you, walk through what your needs are. It's kind of like we're, we're pulling out of you exactly what your needs are. Because some people call and there's just frustration because they get those efficiency Vermont statements. So we're like, OK, let's take a step back and try to figure this out for you. A lot of times, they'll start with exactly what you've been introduced tonight with the um, heat squad audit. Um, in the same building as tenants at the EIC, we have Jeff is actually in the same building with me. Efficiency Vermont is there. We have the Heat um, Neighbor Works is there as well. So we all work together to kind of go through a solution, find a solution for a customer. Now, when they start with the audit, they might come back to us. I mean, Melanie will give us our names and say, okay, so and so just had their audit. So we might call them up and say, would you like to have somebody come and look at your house and talk about the heating cooling system, the heat pump, or the heat pump hot water heater? So what they'll do is on the Green Mountain Power employees, there's four auditors, or assessors, I should say, will go out, talk about what your needs are, what your goals are, and come up regarding the heat pump cooling and heating system. They'll come up with the cost analysis for you. And if it makes sense for you to do it, just like in some of the other slides, if there's a positive cash flow, then it makes sense for them to put in this system. All right. Um, a lot of folks just don't have the money to do the initial paid going out purchasing product. Also, we include the installation. We warranty the product, and we do an annual um, maintenance on it as well. So those are some of the things that we'll 
why they are attracted to do um, the leasing program through us. There's also the $300 rebate, which was talked about earlier. You can take that um, in, let's see, that can be taken each month out of your payment, or you can take three to seven months upfront free. And the three to seven, all these numbers, these are just numbers on the page, really talking to one of us to figure out how this all works is the best way. If you want to uh, take away tonight, the idea is probably just remember that your monthly payment can be anywhere from $41.99 up to $75.42 a month. Okay, there's 12 different price points. That's the rental. That's the rental of the electricity. Right, and we will talk about that with you. For instance, we know, I mean, we all know these numbers off the top of our head. A 9,000 BTU, that average is $26 a month to run. Okay, so they'll, in the cost analysis, they'll present all this information. And that's why I said they'll present to you the cash flow or what the analysis is because if we're going to tell you it only costs you $42 a month, that's an unfair statement, as you pointed out. Oops. Next product is the heat pump water heater. We have 50 gallons and we have 80 gallons. Now we've had a very successful hot water heater rental program for years. And it started with traditional hot water heaters. And now we've gone into heat pump hot water heaters. There are some restrictions on where you can put a heat pump hot water heater. So if somebody still would like and needs a traditional hot water heater, we can provide one of those as well. The only caveat in that is the 80 gallon is no longer available in the standard. Federal mandate is that all 80 gallons or maybe 55 gallons and above have to be a heat pump hot water heater. But just like in somebody else was saying earlier, there's the $400 rebate. <clears throat> we can give that to you. You can get that in um, 13 to 23 months upfront free. And just like the heat pump program, we will also warranty it, do maintenance on it, and installation can or might not be included. That's where these different prices come in. And once again, the best thing is to talk to us on the phone if you want to really dive into these numbers a little bit more. And what I didn't mention on the previous screen is the installation is included in the cost of the program for the heat pump hot water heaters. How am I doing? Okay. All right. The next thing, which is kind of new for us, and I think some people in this room, I know that um, I have seen some people in this room at another presentation, is the Tesla Powerwall. And what I neglected to put on this, and I should have, was the Powerwall pilot should have been included in this, all right? So we have, um, we've got about 10 of them in place right now. I have a list of about 45 customers where we are going to install the power wall in their home. Um, anybody in here not know what the power wall is? I kind of like to put this in at the last minute because it just is such a big, you know, I'm getting a lot of phone calls on that, on this. It's a storage device for electricity, okay? So your um, generation from your solar can be stored in the power wall or electricity from the grid can be stored in the power wall. There's all sorts of um, uh, goals depending on whether you are a solar producer or whether you're not a solar producer. If you're not a solar producer, think of it as a, a device which is a um, just like a generator. The difference being that it does not require fuel to be poured into it. So you're not using any fossil fuels. Um, and people that want to <laughs> have a green solution, it works out very nicely for them. There's, um, all right, so back to, I know that we're really, I'm really out of time, but I think that if everybody can afford me just two minutes, I'll try to get through this quickly for you. All right, so the first option, which tends to be the most positive, not the most positive, the most attractive option is for the customer that um, wants to just pay $1.25 a day. We call it the daily rider. It equals about $37 a month. And we own the equipment, but we put it in your home 
for $1.25 a day. That does include the installation, all right? And the one thing that is here that really has to be talked about is the shared access. Shared access means that we are going to use that power when we are about to, when we're experiencing peak, de peak demand. Peak demand for us happens about six to seven times a month, and it also happens during the summer. Um, mostly, you know, everybody's more aware of those peak demands when there's a heat wave of sort. Those peak demands is what drives up power costs. So if we're better, if we're able to manage those peak demands and not go to the open market and make purchases, then that will keep our rates down low. We have, um, throughout the state of Vermont, Green Mountain Power has about six jet engines just sitting in a plant ready to be powered up when we're about to hit peak demand. That's an expensive power generation source. That means you're, somebody's pouring um, jet engine fuel into it. So you can imagine that's very expensive. Um, so we're thinking, our vision is that if we are able to stay away from hitting peak by taking energy from these power sources throughout Vermont, that it's a win-win situation. That we'll be able to manage those, um, manage our rates better. The second option is to purchase it for $6,500. And we will give you every month $31.76 credit for shared access. Now that $6,500 does not include the installation. That's about a $2,000 cost, right? And then the third and final option is a direct sale, just like the top one. For six thousand five hundred, no credit and no shared access. For those that don't want to, um, don't want to be left in the dark, because we used up their energy and their power wall, they would probably go with that. There is a simulation as to how much the phone call actually happens. However, we well, well six to seven days a month. That will happen, and then when we hit um, heat waves in the, the summertime, um, power outages for the average Vermonter is two hours. Did anybody in this area on um, Sunday experience a power outage? Mm -hmm. How how long were you out? Four hours. Four. Hours. You would have been fine. You would have gotten through this because the capacity on the power wall is anywhere from four to six hours. And that's all depending on what, that's how much you use. right? How much what you you have a sub panel, and it depends on what you wire is wired to it, and that's the uh, ins installation at the time of the installation that's discussed. So, um, yeah, so that's the Tesla Powerwall program, pilot program. I wanted to say. Now, there's a couple things in this that I want. To people in this room to be aware of just because it's pretty important to understand the scope of this at this time. It really is a narrow scope. It's like any new technology. This is the first stage of it. So the our solution, the 6,500, that whole installation includes the power wall, which is, which is the, uh, the battery pack. It includes an inverter. It includes an auto transformer. Those of you who are in the uh, solar installation business know what I'm talking about, but I'd be happy to spend time with people later on if they don't know what I'm talking about. A meter and a the um, backup sub panel. All right. The inverter itself is a Solar Edge 7600, and at this time it has to be packaged. It, ours has to be installed because of compatibility issues. In the future, Solar Edge will be coming up with retrofit kits. So anybody that had a Solar Edge installed by a um, solar installer, let's say earlier this year, then the retrofit kit will be applied and everything will play nice together. Okay. You're saying this Solar Edge storage comes with the 65? Is yes. Included there? Yeah. Yes. Yes. The installation is not. It is not included. 
And right now they're estimating that to be 2,000. Keep in mind that we are hoping that price will go down. Because right now it's based on when somebody gets to the home and they start the work. So it's, you know, it's manpower at this point. We're putting it in and people are sort of um, the delay will probably, pardon me? The expected life expectancy of 10 the Ten years, thank you for saying that, because the warranty on these is 10 years. For option number one, after 10 years, we will come and take it out, and if you choose to um, continue on, there will be new contracts at that point, and most likely new products. But this product uh, that we're taking out of your house will go back to the Tesla pan plant and will be recycled. And it's a pilot, so where are you doing the pilot? <coughs> Every place in your life, whoever wants to do it? Every place. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about, you know, unicorns and rainbows, really? you can all have a Tesla Powerball now. Um, it is remodeled, so it's not going to be replaced. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's a good question, because what we do at Green Mountain Power, being the an electricity company, we are very much aware of the uh, weather events. You don't know how many emails I got today. You know? Wow, it was all over the place. So when that is about to happen, they're really pretty good about knowing where those cells are going to hit in Vermont. If we are experiencing a peak, and we see that the weather event is going to hit, let's say the weather event is going to hit here in this area, we will not discharge your Tesla Powerball. We have a great weather now. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> We're going to go down to uh, Bennington and take all their power, okay? You guys are going to be able to have your Tesla Powerball for when you are out four hours the other day. So. And you know, there's a lot of questions I could probably, I did this, Presentation last week has been about an hour and a half, I think. Um, <laughs> but, but if our power was out like Sunday night, you can't take our power, we can't take yours, and we can't get ours because the power is out, right? No, the power wall is called the auto transformer. Right. We, well, if the, the lines line are, you're down. right, if the lines are down. But I think what yeah. I'm referring to is more like let's say that we just before the power went okay. out, we just drained your battery. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. we knowing the storm is coming through, we won't do that. Okay. Okay. So six hour weather. And one of the other things is too that um, right now it's my understanding that solar, if you are on net metering or if you're a contributor to the grid, that solar will does not work when there's a power outage. You can now operate your home as an island. So you can keep the solar working for your house in conjunction with the power wall. As long as you're using that solar edge. That's, that's right. That's right. Well, right. Well, the solar edge is the only one that's compatible with the with the uh, product right now, with the power wall. But you're saying you can install that without the solar edge? Right? You can install the Tesla we, without? Yes. We, so, we install the, solar, the uh, power wall and the inverter. Yes. Okay, so if anyone has additional questions, <laughs> sorry, you can, follow, you can follow everybody out and ask additional questions again. The sign sheet meeting, the amendment, add numbers, turn off. Um, and additional um, literature, if you want to pick up stuff from Sloan, um, we are going to wrap up. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Can you come in and help by bringing the chairs? Oh, make it pretty work. Yeah. 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 Yeah.